Hello, everyone, and welcome to our kickoff to Summer Learning Day webinar. My name is Leslie Gabay Swanson. I'm the Director of Program and Systems Quality at the National Summer Learning Association. I'm joined today by Laura Johnson, our Vice President of Communications, and Tyler Manningly, our Marketing Communications Coordinator, will be helping us at, out with uh, tech support today. Just a quick view, overview of our webinar. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what Summer Learning Day is. We're going to hear from a couple connect, uh, communities about uh, what their Summer Learning Day looks like. Um, we'll review some new tools and resources that we uh, at NSA have and some of our partners resources as well. And then we'll have some time for a question and answer. <laughs> First, a little bit about the National Summer Learning Association. NSLA is the only national nonprofit exclusively focused on closing the achievement gap through high quality summer learning for all children and youth. Our work centers on three strategic priorities, recognizing and disseminating what works in summer learning, offering expertise and support for programs and communities to strengthen and expand summer learning opportunities, convening leaders, and advocating for summer learning as a solution for equity and excellence in education. Our vision is that all children and youth will have access to high quality summer learning experiences to help them succeed in college, career, and life. Core to our work is the recognition that high quality summer learning works. High quality summer learning programs have been shown to improve reading and math skills, school attachment, motivation, and relationships with adults and peers. We believe that communities must coordinate to use resources efficiently and expand access to high quality summer learning opportunities so all children can have memorable and enriching summer experiences. So how do we do this work? NSLA offers in-depth guides and resources that can provide your next staff training, conduct, conduct uh, community landscape assessments, or an evaluation of your program's quality. We offer customized technical assistance interactive training institutes, program quality evaluations, and community assessments. So why do we believe that summer is so important? Um, summer is a time of great inequity for young people. During the school year and school day, all children have access to public education and the learning resources that come with that. But when the schools are closed during the summer, Many low-income youth lack access to meals, books, and learning resources and physical activity. We know that the summer months can be a time of learning loss for young people who are not actively engaged in learning opportunities. And we have over 100 years of research showing that youth experience losses in math and reading without opportunities to maintain and build those skills over the summer. I think this is intuitive to most of us. We, this is why teachers have to do so much reviewing at the beginning of the school year to hopefully get school students back on track to learn um, and start learning new material. But what is less talked about are the cumulative effects of summer learning loss, or the summer slide as we sometimes call it. I won't go into all of the research right now, but I just want to point out a few facts and data points that you'll see on the screen. Um, more than two-thirds of the disparity in ninth grade achievement in reading can be explained by unequal access to summer learning opportunities. And this can have an impact on later achievements, such as high school graduation and secondary education attainment. There's also the impact on health. Um, on the one side, youth are in, at an increased risk for weight gain during the summer due to changes from the school year in both fitness and eating routines. And minority children can gain weight up to twice as fast during the summer um, as compared to the school year. On the other side of the coin, many youth experience increased food insecurity in the summer, with only about one in six youth who qualify for free reduced price meals during the school year actually accessing meals during the summer months. And for our older youth, we can see that without summer counseling and support, one third of first generation college attendees experience summer melt and fail to enroll in the fall, even after being accepted. So we know that some of the summer months can have a critical impact on the outcomes for uh, children and youth.
So what are some of the key uh, legislative uh, um, activities that are happening? Um, we know that the, there was federal funding that was threatened by the Trump administration's budget, um, but that has been preserved and, and in some cases increased by Congress um, during the fiscal uh, 2018 budget. And we're looking at next year's budget proposals um, that are coming from the House and Senate right now. You can learn more about these, um, and we encourage you to, uh, your stakeholders to take action through our websites. We're also tracking other federal issue, issues, especially higher education, um, year-round Pell Grants, summer meals, and summer meals. Um, we also have research briefs on many of these issues um, to help you make the case. Just a few more of the top issues uh, this year in state legislators, legislators that, um, that affect summer learning. Um, of the 251 bills that we are currently tracking in states this year, 38 have been passed. There are a couple of states that have had bills pending um, that didn't pass um, specifically to expand and support some programs. So this brings us to, to National Summer Learning Day and, and why we celebrate summer. Um, as I mentioned earlier, one of NSLA's strategic priorities is to advocate for summer learning as a solution for equity and excellence in education. And National Summer Learning Day is, our, is an advocacy day, day aimed at spotlighting and elevating the importance of, of keeping kids learning safe and healthy over the summer months. This year, uh, it will be officially celebrated on July 12th, but we encourage you to celebrate all season long. Your participation in National Summer Learning Day sends a powerful message across the nation that summers matter and offer an opportunity to showcase how summer learning can set pe young people on the path to uh, success. Um, so now we're going to share here from some of our communities um, and programs that are celebrating and lifting up the message that summer matters. First, we're going to hear from Luis Prez. He is the director of, of program and support, program support and expansions for Greater Rochester Summer Learning Association. And after Luis, we'll hear from Rachel Lewis. She is the research project manager for Kansas Enrichment Network. So, if we can hand over to Luis. Thank you, Leslie. It's an uh, honor to be here and to participate with you in this webinar, as well as National Summer Learning Day. And thank you for the opportunity to be able to share what we're doing here in our community. Uh, we're very excited what, about what we've put together and also excited to be able to share it with the folks uh, that are on today. Um, can we go to my first slide there? There we go. So, um, we, we've put our own little logo together, Make Your Summer Rock is what we're using for this summer and hopefully uh, summers to come. A little background about how we've gotten here uh, for the past two summers, our mayor, um, uh, Warren, lovely Warren, has uh, given us a proclamation in summer 2016 and 17. And then in a fairly informal way, we've encouraged our uh, area uh, colleagues and partners in, in summer uh, to be aware of and also uh, however they could to get involved in National Summer Learning Day. Next slide, please. So. Uh, so for summer 2018, uh, through some unprecedented work uh, facilitated by our Rock the Future, which is our local STRIVE initiative, and together with the Greater Rochester After School Alliance, uh, we've been a part of a Summer Learning CAN, a collaborative action network. Uh, and we've been meeting for over a year, developing and securing um, community-wide consensus on elements and guiding principles for effective uh, summer learning programs. And it's through that work that uh, we had the key players at the table uh, to be able to formulate uh, and plan a, a committee uh, to provide community-wide focus on National Summer Learning Day. And that the work of this group, the, the, the names that you see here, their titles are, are the folks that helped us put National Summer Learning Day for uh, Greater Rochester together. 
Um, and we worked on a, a number of things. Uh, we developed what we call a signature event while we're encouraging uh, uh, NSL uh, National Summer Learning Day activities uh, at our local program sites. Uh, we've also been involved in advocacy and, and awareness raising for National Summer Learning Day uh, with National Summer Learning Day as a, as a focal point. And then we've partnered with our, our colleagues at the Central Library to hold a National Summer Learning Day event there and at the same time take advantage of what they're going to be offering for the day and for National Summer Learning Day uh, at their site. We're pretty excited about what we've been able to accomplish and put together. Uh, here I'll show you what we've been able, what we're going to be doing actually on the day of National Summer Learning Day at our, at our local library. We're very excited about uh, being able to secure an unprecedented joint National Summer Learning Day proclamation from our city, our county, and the city of uh, the Rochester City School District. Um, no one's done this before. I, we've seen some joint proclamations by the city and the county, but we're so excited that the Rochester City School District has joined us in trying to get the message and awareness out of why summer learning is important. Uh, we've also been able to secure a joint proclamation from two of our state senators, Senator, Senator Joe Robach and Rich Funk here, are uh, very, very uh, valuable and important supporters of summer learning. And we also have a representative coming, a policy director for the New York State Network for Youth Success, who's going to be part of the event as well. And we couldn't do an event like this without including some testimonials from, from parents and or students. In this case, uh, we have parents who are going to come and share why they think summer learning is important. Uh, and then as part of our advocacy and uh, awareness uh, raising, we've uh, sent invitations out to dignitaries, to funders, uh, elected officials, community leaders, and uh, agency uh, uh, leaders as well. Uh, and then we're going to use the event uh, also as a press event uh, to, to engage our local press and have them get the message out about why this is important. The, uh, the uh, Central Library is offering some exploration stations for the day. That's open to the community. Uh, we're using that uh, uh, site and that event to be able to bring in what we're going to be doing. Um, and then the, as part of the, the exploration stations also serve uh, as, a, as a tour uh, opportunity for our dignitaries. We're going to take about the last 15 minutes of our, of our event for dignitaries, elected officials, and folks who are there to uh, tour the exploration stations and see what kids are learning uh, at the library throughout, throughout the summer. Uh, and then lastly, just some of the strategies that we've used to uh, engage our partners, engage the community. Uh, we sent invitations uh, to summer learning programs at multiple points since, since we started and decided we wanted to do this. Um, we have a, a, a roster specific National Summer Learning logo, which you saw at the beginning of this presentation, uh, that we can update and use for ensuing years, which is uh, our desire. Um, and then we, 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 we got to send out a shout out to our friend Mercedes at the uh, Rochester City School District, who actually put together a social media toolkit around National Summer Learning Day, uh, provided the logo in different formats and and some um, scripts for folks to be able to be on, on social media, um, uh, speak, speaking to the press, whatever it may be. Um, and then uh, in, in order to get the message out, we've used uh, co constant contact, uh, emails, evites, obviously social media. And then from the group that had been working on this summer can, using our key community connections to get the word out about uh, not only National Summer Learning Day, uh, but, but celebrate uh, what's happening in our community and raise the awareness uh, of our community about why summer learning is so important. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to share this. Great. Thank you so much, Liz. Um, really looking forward to your event. Um, next, we'll hear from Rachel. Thank you. Uh, my name is Rachel Willis, and I am a research project manager for the Kansas Enrichment Network which is part of the Center for Public Partnership and Research at KU. So uh, thank you, Leslie, for inviting me to be part of this webinar. Um, so the network, um, before I, I talk about this Summer Learning Day event that we're hosting, I just wanted to provide a little bit of background about the network. The Kansas Enrichment Network um, envisions a state where all children and youth can participate in safe and affordable, high quality, out of school activities that provide academic assistance and help working families. So the Kansas Enrichment Network is 
lot of funded after school networks um, here specifically in Kansas. So there is a, a network um, like ours that supports out of school time in each of the 50 states. Um, so I encourage you if, you, if you don't know who your network is, uh, to definitely reach out. They have lots of resources um, and can provide support uh, to programs in a variety of ways. So um, our network, the Kansas Enrichment Network, we have three um, ways that we work. The first one is through quality. So we host a variety of statewide conferences and trainings and we provide technical assistance and coaching um, specifically to the 21st Century Community Learning Center programs. Um, then we also advocate for programs. So we just work to generate awareness and excitement about the importance of, of after school and summer learning. And then lastly, of course, we work on sustainability. So um, since we're part of the Center for Public Partnership and Research, we're completely grant funded. Um, so of course, we have to work on sustaining ourselves, but we also spend um, a good deal of time helping programs uh, find additional revenue sources and, and work on um, keeping their doors open and finding uh, ways to open more programs across the state. So I've been with the network for a little over five years now, um, and I love the advocacy policy work. So um, when an opportunity like National Summer Learning Day presents itself, um, I jump on it. So um, the network has hosted um, a variety of different summer, summer learning events. Um, and this year, we are partnering um, with a summer program that's actually hosted by the YMCA of Greater Kansas City. So um, our event will be at one elementary site. Um, there'll be about 120 youth um, participating in that program um, throughout the summer. And we expect about that same number on the actual day. And then um, our goal is to have an additional 20 or 30 adults there um, at the event um, and really uh, specifically targeting um, some key stakeholders and elected officials. So we're treating this um, summer learning day event more like a, a typical site visit. So we're just amplifying um, what they do on a, on a typical day of programming um, with some other kind of fun things thrown in there. Um, and then showing, like I said, a select group of, of key uh, stakeholders and elected officials um, really being a target uh, to share additional information. So our event will be on Friday. July 13th uh, from 10 to noon. So um, as we've kind of worked through this and, and like I said, we've hosted a uh, summer learning day events uh, for several years now, we've really found that the uh, National Summer Learning Association's tips, those 10 tips uh, for hosting event are so key and we really work to stick to those 10 tips. Um, so if you haven't checked out that resource um, on their website, I encourage you to. So um, we select a, a willing partner or program um, based on the, the quality of the programming, of course. So um, we're always looking for that high quality of programming. Um, then the location of the program, because of our focus on specific elected officials and key stakeholders, we wanted something in a, a particular geographical area. Um, and then, of course, we always consider the number of youth that are um, involved in participating in that program. So then we um, work with the program to really, like I said, highlight it and bring out what they do best um, and uh, really bank on, on their expertise as far as what um, the fun theme will be and uh, the different activities. And so uh, this year our uh, event is focusing on conservation. So um, kind of doing things related to, um, you know, just being outside and, and remembering our, our environment and, and different things like that. So, um, two, of the, two of my favorite activities that I think that the youth and um, our special guests will, will get a good kick out of um, include seed bombs. So students will actually be making, using clay and dirt and uh, different flower seeds, these uh, little uh, seed bombs. So comparable to the, the spa bombs and those things that are, are kind of the hit now, um, they'll make seed bombs and then you can literally kind of toss them in your yard and, and they'll they'll start to grow. So that should be fun for the kids to put together. And then they'll also be going on a spider hunt. So we've got a, a really neat STEM activity. Um, it's on our website. So you can go to our website and find both of these activities. Um, but the kids will be out looking for, for different spiders um, around their program. So uh, 
I guess it, it should be fun and also um, hopefully um, appealing to the media to get some some good shots there. So um, the program is actually finishing up their civic engagement unit on this particular day as well. So we thought that inviting these um, very specific elected officials and encouraging them to speak and and talk about their um, their positions and and why they um, chose to, to serve would be just kind of the culminating event for the youth as they think about civic engagement and what that means to be civically involved um, in their community. So we were excited about um, that kind of collaboration and natural fit there. So of course, um, throughout the morning, we'll um, be distributing, we've uh, made a specific one pager um, and we've pulled a lot of the infographics from the National Summer Learning Association again and have wor uh, worked with our own design team here at the center and, and tweaked those to match the, the network's logo and the color and the brand um, and add some Kansas specific information. So we're excited about that. And then um, we'll have lots of swag and, and food for both the youth and our guests there as well. So then um, lastly, um, I would just say that, you know, we are um, fortunate enough to have a design team here at the center that really helps us, like I said, with those one pagers and working with local media and, and sharing it on social media. Um, so they really um, keep us in that, that mindset. So they're, you know, always talking to us about, well, you know, what's going to be attractive to the cameras and how can we make this appealing and what's our tagline and, and different things like that. So we're so fortunate to, to have them um, and their support there. But we will use the um, press release template, again, provided by the National Summer Learning folks. So again, if, if you haven't been um, using these resources or this is your first time, I really encourage you to. You uh, definitely don't have to recreate the wheel. Um, and it, it's just a, a great starting point um, uh, for all these different components. So, and then um, lastly, we really try to keep it um, fun for everybody. So we try to keep it fun for that partnering program and, and not add a lot of work. Um, we're coming in with additional resources and staff and that sort of thing um, to provide to help with the day. So um, we try to keep it fun and, and highlight the great work that they're already doing. Um, and then of course, make it fun for the youth um, and then uh, just have lots of energy and, and make it easy to, um, generate that excitement and awareness about how important um, and critical these summer learning programs are. So some of our swag this year include sunglasses. Um, we're really excited about those. And then um, some temporary tattoos for the kids. Um, so uh, we've really branched out and I think it'll, it should be lots of fun. So then I will just finish with my last slide here. Um, that is of my contact information. And again, um, if you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out and uh, check out our, net, our website, the Kansas Enrichment um, website for great resources. While some are very specific to Kansas, others are not. So again, feel free to use that. And if you don't work with your after school network, feel free to, to reach out and I can make that introduction and um, send you information to your state specific um, after school, out of school time network, so. So with that, Leslie, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you so much, Rachel. Um, next, I think we're going to hear from Laura about some more resources this year. Hello. Thank you, Rachel. I will take the swag and the food, but I'm not sure about the spider hunt. <laughs> Happy summer, everyone. It is uh, delightful to hear so many of the wonderful things happening across the country. And I am delighted to share with you many of the many uh, resources that we have to help you in your outreach uh, throughout the community and to your families. Okay. So Summer Learning Day, as you've heard, it is our National Advocacy Day. It's our chance to really lift our voices collectively as a country and to really kind of shine a spotlight on what's happening in your community and also the work that still needs to be done to support young people during the summer season. On our website, we have, as Rachel has mentioned, quite a number of resources that you will find. Uh, there are community toolkits for families. There are toolkits for local leaders. 
uh, and also how to find a summer meal. So if you're needing to connect, connect folks with summer meal sites, there is also uh, an option for you to be able to do that in your community. What is really exciting for us is being able to see what's happening across the country from where we sit here at NSLA. Um, we have a summer learning event tracker, which you see on the screen. And this is really an important tool, and we hope that if you have not already posted your event or program that you will very soon. Uh, this really is our kind of dashboard of what's happening across the country, but it also serves as another important tool and that we get lots of media and queries during this, this time of the season. Um, I just took a call from NBC6 out of Miami just a few uh, hours ago, and we were able to locate a number of um, Florida-based events and programs that are taking place in that community. And so I was able to connect the producer there with a number of events that uh, will have uh, that special local flavor and special story that they will tell in that particular market. So I encourage you to, if you have not already, to please post your program or event. It does not have to take place on July 12th. Uh, it can happen uh, any time during the season, but this is a good way for us to keep uh, track of what's happening and to us, for us to connect press with uh, those different activities. We're excited this year to announce a, an official partnership with Lands In. Uh, lifting up their commitment to education. This year, as part of our National Summer Learning Day celebration, we will launch an art contest that kicks off on July 12th, and it goes until August 12th. Uh, we will announce the winners on August 31st, and this Love Learning Art Contest, you can find more details on the website that will go live on July 12th on their website and also on ours. Now I'm going to kick it to Elizabeth McChesney, one of our wonderful partners out of Chicago. Uh, we love hearing all of the great things coming out of Chicago Public Library, which is one of our award winners, um, excellence award winners. And we have, we, I'd like to call Liz a partner in good because we've cooked up a really incredible uh, celebration for Summer Learning Day that involves two really wonderful partners, the Association of Children's Museums and the Association for Library Service to Children. So Liz, take it away, and then I'll come back and share more resources for your summer outreach. Thanks so much, Laura, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm just delighted to be here with you and to uh, talk about libraries, which is my very favorite subject. And Louise, thank you for working with your library in Rochester and uh, for what you're doing with them. Libraries, um, I like to say, are one of the oldest institutions to embrace summer learning. For over a hundred years, libraries across the country have had summer reading programs, which started um, in the Victorian era as sort of a moralistic list of books for children to be reading so they wouldn't go astray, has now turned into wild and wonderful um, out of school time learning for kids across the country. And we love working with our friends in the museums. We think a lot alike between libraries and museums. Museums are um, wonderful partners um, who engage children in out-of-school time learning in much the same way that public libraries do. And more and more, museums and libraries are working together to deepen content and engage more kids. As we say here in Chicago, between the Chicago Public Library and our Museum of Science and Industry, we're serving the same kids. So together we harness the power and the reach to engage kids more deeply um, and to work together in content development and in program design. With many successful strategies for partnerships between libraries and museums that, in, that involve um, sharing curriculum, bringing families um, into libraries, and then taking them to museums, and bringing museum educators into libraries for programming. Uh, family memberships are sometimes given as prizes or incentives. And here in Chicago, we always end summer with just an enormous celebration of summer learner success with a, a free field trip to um, our partner museum uh, for the child and all their family. Their participation is the key to learning. So this year, 
We are really excited that together with NSLA, the American Library Service to Children Division of the American Library Association are co-sponsoring a summer learning ambassador and a summer read aloud. Brian Collier is a five-time award winner. He's won the Caldecott Honor Award, the Coretta Scott King Award. You see two of those medals here on the cover of his beautiful book, Trombone Shorty. And the sequel to that book um, is The Five O'Clock Band, which was just released the, over the weekend at the American Library Association. Um, Brian Collier is a well-established and much beloved um, children's author and illustrator. And here he's written um, with Troy Andrews, Trombone Shorty, the story of Trombone Shorty's own finding music, finding a band, the five o'clock band, and growing up to become this just immense name in the world of music. In a recent ALA event, Brian said to me, Trombone Shorty epitomizes what happens when kids have the time and the space to explore their interests and spark their passions. And that is why he was named NSLA Summer Ambassador and Trombone Shorty, we're thrilled, is the summer um, read aloud. So on July 12th, NSLA and ALSC are promoting uh, that libraries and museums across the country um, read Trombone Shorty with kids and celebrate music and the role of music in children's lives with this beautiful book. We have seven um, wonderful library partners who are anchor uh, sites this year and are going to be conducting large-scale programs in San Francisco in partnership with the Museum of Modern Art. There's going to be a huge, huge celebration there that also in in includes National uh, Park Service um, employees. In King County, which is rural and suburban Seattle, there are programs happening in all of their libraries around Trombone Shorty on July 12th. Salt Lake City is having a huge celebration at their central library. And in New Orleans, Trombone Shorty's own home, there's going to be a music-based program with the reading of Trombone Shorty and New York City and Brooklyn are have hosting multiple events in conjunction with their children's museums. In Nashville, there's a program planned with over 150 kids. And here in Chicago, I always like to say we do nothing small. So we're bringing Brian Collier himself here to Chicago. He'll be accompanied by a jazz trombonist and our five partners will be engaging kids in STEM and art activities. Um, that includes the Museum of Science and Industry, the Shed Aquarium, the Lincoln Park Zoo, um, the Art Institute, and for the first time ever, the Chicago Public Schools is learning day with in partnership with us. So we're thrilled to have them on board as well. And you can get all sorts of resources online at NSLA's website, and I'll throw it back to Laura to talk more about that. Terrific. Thank you, Liz. We are excited about um, Chicago and Kansas City and Rochester and all of the great things happening across the country. Just wanted to go back a little bit to some of the um, resources that Rachel had mentioned. And you've heard about um, proclaiming Summer Learning Day in your community. We have proclamation language that's available on our website that you can easily uh, customize for your community. Uh, we also have a number of uh, template press releases and uh, other communication outreach tools like an op-ed template, uh, sample radio PSAs that uh, you can use. And we are excited this year to once again launch our national outdoor billboard campaign with um, Clear Channel Outdoor. They've been a wonderful partner for the last three years. And so across the country, you'll see billboards pop popping up that will carry the message that summers matter and will re refer folks back to our site for additional resources. The other resources that we have available are the uh, mini fact sheets and tip sheets for parents and families. We have a wonderful partnership with Learning Heroes. They've done a lot of research on parent mindsets and kind of really looking at the tools that parents need to support their children, not just during the summer, but year round. 
So there's a great resource on our site now called the Summer Stride. And it's kind of a three-step plan on how to really think about summer, make an intentional plan to help kids return to the school year strong. And as we mentioned, uh, there's that tip sheet, 10 tips for celebrating Summer Learning Day. Uh, you can find also tip sheets that you can download for many of your community events and lots of other resources that are really kind of plug and play. And then finally, as I mentioned, there is also a digital action toolkit. Uh, this will be shared very shortly. And so uh, leading up to Summer Learning Day and beyond, um, these are many messages that speak to the value of keeping kids learning safe and healthy. Uh, it speaks to a lot of the different activities that are happening with our libraries and museums, uh, also our lands in art contest. Uh, so these are these are posts that are ready to go. All you have to do is schedule them, and you are ready to, to lift your, your voices around this issue. Um, we have a number of other partners that have wonderful platforms uh, that keep kids learning in a digital space. <coughs> You're going to hear about, about that in just a, a moment. Uh, in fact, one of the producers that I talked to this morning asked about those other informal learning opportunities. So if I can't get my child into an enrollment-based program, what are some things that we can do at home together that still keeps uh, skills sharp? And so some of the, the uh, platforms that you see here, uh, EverFi Summer Slugger uh, is a great program for fourth and fifth graders. Our Scholastic Summer Reading Challenge is always a big hit during the summer. And LRNG is really an incredible platform for older youth that really allows them to follow their own passions, passions, their interests, and earn digital badges in the process. And so now I'm going to turn it over to Dave Lines with Metametrics. Uh, he's Director of Project Management at Metametrics, and they have some wonderful tools for reading and math, and that will really help uh, strengthen uh, reading and math skills, not just during the summer, but also throughout the entire year. So, Dave? Thank you so much, Laura, and, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, let's see, I'm going to see if I'm controlling the screen here. And there we go. Um, so, yeah, as, as Laura said, I am, uh, my name is Dave Lines, and I am Director of Product Management here at Metametrics. Um, as some of you probably know, uh, Metametrics is the developer of the Lexile framework for reading and the Quantile framework for math. Uh, Lexile and Quantile measures really help to bring meaning to measurement by matching students to resources using scientific universal scales. And um, we've been very well aware here of the problems with summer learning loss. So over the last few years, we have developed some free online tools um, designed to promote reading and maintain math skills during the summer break. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about those two programs just for a few minutes here. Um, the reading program is called Find a Book, and the math program is called the Summer Math Challenge. So I'll start with the reading program. Um, again, it's called, it's called Find a Book, and we have a tool on our website that enables users to select books based on a student's Lexile measure and interests. And if you don't have a Lexile measure for the student, you can just put in their grade rather than their uh, Lexile measure. And this tool is, is free. There's no registration required. It's available to educators and parents and students. We actually have a lot of students using the tool um, to search for books and build custom book lists. Um, and then they can take those book lists and uh, go to their local pu public library to check the books out. It's very easy to use. There's five simple steps. You go to fab.lexile.com. Fab, of course, being short for find a book. Um, as I said, you can enter the child's Lexile measure or grade level. Then you can select some categories that match the child's interests. And then you get a um, big list of books that are you know, about the right difficulty level for the book. And again, they're going to match the child's interest since they put in some categories. Um, and then you can save these books to a custom book list 
that you can print out and take to the library and find some great books to read over the summer. Um, there's a couple other things you can do at the Find a Book site that I'll share with you. One thing is that um, the kids or, or parents, if they like, can submit a summer reading pledge. Um, this is just basically a way of pledging to read a certain number of books over the summer. Um, maybe help some kids, uh, you know, stick with their summer reading plan. Um, and um, parents and kids and, and teachers can also download free summer reading logs. Um, and I know that I've found with my own kids that having a, a summer reading log that they, uh, they have to keep up with help, helps encourage them to keep up with their reading. So again, that's at fab.lexile.com. Um, I'm going to talk about our summer math, math program now for, for just a couple minutes. Um, and there's a quote that I put in here about um, how much math ability um, kids typically lose over the summer months. I'm sure most of you are aware of that. Um, it's, you know, every bit as big a problem as summer reading loss. Um, and um, back in 13, Metametrics created the Summer Math Challenge, which is a free math skills program. Um, it's designed for students who have just completed first through eighth grade. Um, and the basic idea is that we try to help kids from losing the math skills that they acquired during the previous school year. Um, as I think I said, it's a six week long math skills program. It actually started about a week ago, um, but that's no problem. Folks can join at any time. If they've missed some of the lessons, they can just go to our website to catch up. Uh, again, it's for students who have completed uh, first through eighth grades. And the way it works is that the parent or an educator registers at our website and they enroll their kids and then they get emails every weekday that have um, fun activities and math resources. And again, the, the, the content is looking at the math skills that the kids would have learned during the previous school year. We're not, we're not trying to teach them anything new. We're just trying to forget, help them not forget what they learned during the previous school year. And the idea is that the parents spend about 15 to 20 minutes daily practice time with their kids every day, just doing a little math. In the same way you might read to your kids, we're just trying to get parents to do a little bit of math with their kids every day. Um, and when the Summer Math Challenge program is over on Friday, July 27th, there's a parent letter, an award certificate, and a teacher letter that the parents can print out. Um, and what we found is that a lot of school districts have the parents print out these award certificates and teacher letters and bring them into the child's new teacher at the start of the new year um, so that teacher can get an idea on some of the stuff that the child's been keeping up with over the summer. And last summer in 2017, uh, we had over 50,000 students from all 50 states participating in the Summer Math Challenge, and we're hoping to have even more this summer. Again, that's a free program. Um, so just to summarize, um, for reading, we have the Find a Book program. It's at fab.lexile.com. And for math, we have the Summer Math Challenge, which is at quantiles.com slash summer hyphen math. And now I will turn it back to Laura, and thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. Those are awesome tools. Um, so as I shared with you earlier, um, we will have, in, in some, some communities, um, the opportunity to customize digital billboards um, we have done this, uh, for example, in Phoenix. Uh, we're doing it in Atlanta. So those are other ways that um, we can connect your local markets with the local clear channel um, partners if it is a market that they have inventory in. So uh, again, being able to make sure that our tools can support your local efforts. Uh, we also have a radio public service announcement that will air across 850 radio stations on iHeartMedia, and you should be hearing those at the beginning of July going until the end of August. Um, this is also a great opportunity for you to tap into local iHeart radio stations to tell your story and your communities, and so we encourage you to reach out to the local iHeart radio stations. Uh, to really kind of lift up the work that's happening in, in your, your community. And then finally, let's see, uh, as we've shared, uh, there are also many other uh, summer 
literacy uh, resources. We've got an official summer reading list that's available online. Uh, we have a wonderful partner with Carson DeLosa. You can access the Summer Bridge activities. Uh, that booklet series is available uh, on our site. And we have dozens of research briefs and uh, access to the Scholastic Summer Reading Challenge as well. So lots of great resources for you to make the most of summer in your community. And finally, I'd like to just give a wonderful thank you uh, and express our appreciation for all of our Summer Learning Day partners. Uh, you see them on the screen. Uh, we are also greatly uh, appreciative for the support that we receive from the Wallace Foundation for all of our work year round. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Leslie for questions. Great, thanks, Laura. Um, so now we have some time for some questions. If you have any questions for um, our panelists or for NSOA, please go ahead and type those into the Q&A box. So while we're waiting, um, the question just for a question for just anybody on our panel, um, if you could talk a little bit about how you were able to engage um, some of the partners, some of you mentioned some very um, interesting partners, whether it was elected officials or school districts, and kind of how you've uh, approached that in, in building those relationships. Yeah, this is Lewis um, from Rochester, New York. Um, as I shared earlier, you know, one of the benefits that we've had is a very active uh, uh, group of folks, especially through our Greater Rochester After School Alliance, um, uh, bringing out of school, after school, summer uh, providers together. Uh, and then just kind of from, from that, leveraging that, those relationships to being able to focus on National Summer Learning Day and getting to do what we're gonna do this summer. So that, that's primarily the way that we've been able to do it. All right, thanks, Laura. Uh, Leslie, this is Liz. I, th I think just like Lewis, we've been able to really um, leverage the success of our Summer Learning Challenge um, to invite and entice our partners to come into a Summer Learning Day program with us. And um, when we meet with our partners in the fall each year for our summer program, um, Summer Learning Day is top of mind. And so we start planning for this early um, in the year when we start um, our next cycle for the year. So I think that that also helps to give partners a, some lead time so that they're um, aware and can start thinking about what their capacity is. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add to that. I'll add to that as well that what we've tried to do is make it as easy as possible for all of the sites. So, you know, we're just telling them to have summer learning day on your radar and connect activities, things that you may be already planning to do uh, to National Summer Learning Day to raise the awareness and, and, and make it a focal point uh, right where they're at. Um, people can join us at the signature event if they want to, uh, but they don't have to. We know that there's a tremendous uh, work going on throughout the community and they can celebrate right, right where they're at and still feel as part of uh, National Summer Learning Day. Hey, thank you. Um, so question for Dave. Um, you mentioned there about some great resources there. Um, how can people access those, and is there a cost associated with those? Uh, yeah, so th there is no cost. Um, and the uh, resources that we have for our summer math program are accessed just by signing up for the summer math challenge. Um, and then once you sign up and enroll your child, um, you start getting emails every day, and the emails have links to the resources. And the resources are targeted at whatever skill we're talking about on, in that particular day's email. Thank you. Um, 
Uh, Lewis or, or Rachel, actually, Liz, you could answer this question as well. What are some of the key resources, whether it's funding, um, manpower, um, what were some of the most the, the key resources that were most important in making your summer learning day um, events successful? Um, well, for us in Chicago, we're really, um, we dug into the, the Brian Collier and Troy Andrews book of Trombone Shorty. And so um, we're, we, we're deepening kids' engagement with the book through activities. So the Museum of Science and Industry is create, has created a sound sandwich, and that's a resource that's available for everyone else to use. Um, that's essentially two craft sticks, a rubber band, and one inch of a plastic drinking straw, and allows kids to make their own kazoo-style musical element. But while they do that, they're also learning about sound and vibration. So it's a very layered effect to the learning. They're learning about trombone shorty, they're learning about trombones, and they're also learning a little about the science of sound. Um, and then our Art Institute is gonna be doing collage making with kids um, and drawing on art that's uh, available at the Art Institute to see when kids come for visits. But the book itself is illustrated in a collage style. So we're taking the book as a springboard in various directions. And um, that's just fun to do and allows you to be creative with a book as well. Um, oftentimes publishers will have study guides or classroom um, activity booklets that accompany books and many times on uh, publishers websites you can get additional activities as well. But NSLA has posted our activities and our extensions that even include making a sound gumbo uh, where all the kids become musical instruments just using their own voices. Very cool. And uh, Louis and, uh, and Rachel, Rachel, maybe we can share a little bit about more about how you've been able to engage um, elected officials in your activities and kind of what their response has been. Sure, this is Rachel. Um, and um, it's always a challenge to uh, engage elected officials um, because they are so busy and there's things, um, so many different um, things and folks and causes really demanding their attention. Um, so we try to be creative um, with our, our outreach to them specifically. Um, we try to meet them where they're at. So we've had some success actually using social media, so uh, tweeting and that sort of thing and engaging with them um, through their, their Facebook accounts. Um, but then Overall, I would just say persistency. So um, I'm not afraid to follow up and follow up and follow up um, and make that original ask pretty early and then, um, you know, continue to kind of um, bother them until <laughs> uh, so we, we get some sort of uh, response or commitment, at least from a staffer. And then, then once you have a staffer um, out, out to the event, it, it's an easy sell um, because we all know the, the great work that happens within these programs, how fun they are, how much learning happens, um, how much the youth enjoy them, and the importance it really has for, for working families. So um, once we kind of hook them and, and get them out to the event, then it's, it's just continuing that relationship so that they'll come back um, next time. Um, but like I said, once, once you get them out, um, it's an easy sell for sure. Great, thank you. Um, so, Doesn't unless we have any more questions, I had one more question just for everybody, and that is, um, what is your top piece of advice uh, you would have for others who are maybe, maybe planning their first summer learning event or simply just wanna spotlight the work that they're doing in, your, in their communities? What advice would you give to them? Yeah, th th this is Lewis, you know, as a, what I said earlier in terms of keeping it simple for folks. So we're hoping that we're going to have a, a, a bunch of programs that are going to be focused on National Summer Learning Day just by the work that's been taking place the last couple months of communicating and highlighting. Um, but, but I would just say keeping it simple uh, and, and enabling people to be involved uh, at their own level, at their own site, 
and in their own way. Um, that, that would be my, my, my piece of advice. This is Liz. I agree with Lewis. I think keeping it simple and keeping it sort of a unified rallying cry. So for us, that's trombone shorty. And um, everybody's going to do something in all 80 of our libraries around this book on or near July 12th. Our partners are all doing something with us on July 12th, but they'll also be doing um, something in their a program in all of their sites. And I think keeping it simple and keeping it um, right in people's own wheelhouses. So the Science Museum is going to do a science program and the Art Institute is going to do an art program and, and that's just fine. Everybody should be able to take it and interpret it their own way. And I think that's one of the most um, important points on NSLA's tip sheet about Summer Learning Day is just to keep it fun and um, and easy. Yeah. Great, thanks for sharing that. Leslie, um, Leslie, yeah. this is Laura. I would just add to, to the simplicity piece that this is an advocacy day. And so using the, the power of um, voices and social media and you know the media within a community and also just being able to reach out to families directly is also very impactful and very powerful. And so if you're not hosting an event, um, you know, it's great to be able to lift up our voice, voices collectively through, through media, uh, social and traditional media as well. Okay. Um, thank you. And thank you to all the panelists for sharing all that great information about your events this year. Um, just want to share a couple of announcements. Uh, the first is uh, just a big hello to anybody who's joining us from the Campaign for Grade Level Reading. Um, the campaign is a collaborative effort by foundations, nonprofit pa partners, business leaders, government agencies, and states and communities across the nation to ensure that more children in low income families succeed in school and graduate prepared for college, a career in active citizenship. Um, NSLA is excited to see you all in Philadelphia in a few weeks for grade level reading week. Registration is open and you can find out more on their website. Um, and for hello to you, all of those who are joining from our Common Grounds group. Um, Common Ground is a peer learning uh, affinity group that we've NSLA has created uh, to help people uh, connect around common areas of interest um, when we invite all of your, our current grounds members to join us for Summer Learning Day and, and celebrating Summer Learning Day and posting your event to our tracker. If you're not already a member of the Common Grounds, you can join us. Um, on, there's more information on our website as well. We are wrapping up this year's Excellence Award um, uh, Excellence in Summer Learning Awards. Um, we're hoping to announce our award winners for 2018 very soon. You can find out more information about the awards on our website. Um, and then we wanted to announce that we, uh, through our partnership uh, that Laura mentioned with uh, Land's End, um, through their Love Learning campaign, we are introducing a new addition to the Excellence Awards, the first annual Lands End Love Learning Award. Um, and this award will recognize anytime, anywhere, summer learning. Um, and there will be more information about that on our website as well. Finally, um, our national uh, conference is um, happening this year in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, it is uh, November 12th to the 14th. Uh, registration is open right now on our website, and we hope to see you there in Kansas City. Finally, if you're not following us on, on social media, be sure to follow us on Twitter and, and like us on Facebook to receive the latest announcements um, about events and resources. And thank you again for joining us today. Um, I hope that you picked up some tips, and we look forward to seeing your uh, events and programs on our summer tracker.